Hey everyone, I am making a special video today. Not my usual stuff, but I'm putting it out there for anyone who might need this information. It's information I wish I had about a year ago. Um, <clears throat> my dog is an elderly Great Pyrenees, 13 years old. And I just found out a couple weeks ago that he basically has uh, paralysis in his hind legs. So if you talk to uh, most conventional veterinarians, they will tell you there's really nothing they can do. They can give, um, you know, medication for pain relief, um, but essentially the, you know, prognosis is not really good. The, the chance of reversing this, like they say, it, it can't be fixed. Um, and from what I see online, it starts with the hind legs and then in the paralysis eventually spreads to the front ones. So then it's all four legs that are paralyzed and from there it goes to the rest of the body. And I'm seeing that some people have, um, their pets are dealing with paralysis in the throat. And this is really heartbreaking where what I'm hearing is, you know, again, if it spreads this far, the pet will have trouble swallowing and eating food and it's just a horrible way to go out and so um, I'm not content to uh, you know take no for an answer like that um, maybe there is nothing that can be done but I'm going to give it one last ditch effort at this point as I'm filming um, my dog Ian he can't really stand for more than a minute um, today was pretty good he got up and walked around twice but again he walked for maybe just a minute and then he he loses his strength and he falls out and we have to help him lay down and actually we've been helping him lay down for oh probably six months now let me say that if Everything I'm doing, which I'm going to share with you in this video, I'm going to share with you um, what I've done with his diet, what I'm doing with physical therapy, what I'm doing with supplements, and oh, pain relief as well, all natural. I will put that in this video. If these things do not work, I'm giving it about a month, okay? If it doesn't work, I am not going to blame it on any of the products that I am featuring here and by the way I'm not getting any kind of kickbacks for promoting pro I'm telling you honestly these are honest reviews what I'm using and how they're affecting my dog but I am gonna say in all fairness if they don't work miracles for him I'm not going to be surprised because I'm going to say to you that this if there is a failure, it is probably because it, on my part, it was too little too late. And that's another reason why I'm putting the video out because it's taken me over a year to figure this out. And it's not easy. Like if you are a pet owner and you're dealing with this, it is quite difficult to figure out, to pinpoint that this is the exact issue because when let me give you for example, a year ago, my dog started having fecal incontinence, which means he was pooping in his sleep. And we didn't know what was going on. At the time, I went online and I researched it because I figured out something's not, like this is not in his, you know, character. He doesn't do this, not even, I mean, at first I thought, well, is it a behavioral issue? No, we ruled all that out. And then I started changing his diet, giving him probiotics, um, getting him off of kibble. These are things that you would want to do. Um, but, you know, but then when the problems continued and they weren't improving, I started thinking it's a muscular skeletal issue. I did take him to a vet. And she agreed that she thought it probably was a muscular skeletal issue, but she didn't really run any tests. Again, conventional vet because I'm out in Timbuk3 in Texas. Sorry, but <laughs> you know, I was born and raised in Houston. I've lived my adult life on and off out in Austin. So I'm 
I am used to more resources, more access to alternatives, and there are none out here. Okay, so, and then amidst COVID, I really had a lot of problems um, getting help with this at the level that I needed. Okay, so anyway, that vet, she said, yeah, I think it's a uh, muscular skeletal issue. I continued on, you know, with his dietary adjustments, uh, keeping him on wet food, giving him probiotics. Um, but I was, I started supplementing a um, hip and joint product. Uh, I tried several and actually I've got, I'm on like an auto mail order um, online from one product and when I run out and I often do, um, I just go to natural grocers and I get this other bottle. Um, by the way, when you're dealing with a large breed dog like this, one of the significant challenges is the, the portions that need to be given to larger breeds. And I know this will be relevant to people who have like German Shepherds. And from the research I've done, they too are often predisposed to having this issue. Um, I, it can happen in cats or dogs or different breeds, but German Shepherds in particular, and mine is a Great Pyrenees. So um, it's like you run out of these bottles of supplements pretty quick with the larger breeds because per pound you have to give them more. Um, I think some of us with larger breed dogs, we're aware of this, like it's not too much of a shock, but uh, yeah, the bill can rack up kind of quick. So anyway, I, I was supplementing with um, things for his hips and his joints. And honestly, to be frank with you, I didn't feel like it was making a difference until I ran out of the supplement. And I'm like, eh, who cares? You know, I don't think it's really working anyway. So I let him go for like three days without his supplements. And then I saw, actually, no, he's not doing somersaults with these you know, like a lot of the marketing for these products, they'll make you believe your dog's gonna be doing somersaults if you put your dog on it. Well, yeah, no, I mean, he wasn't off the charts miraculous on the product, but when you took him off, he was definitely having more trouble getting around and seemed to be in more pain as well. So um, I've kept him on that, but unfortunately he continued to worsen with his mobility issues and that's when I was like, this something else is going on here. And we would give him back massages and try to, you know, I, and I was wanting to get him to a, an animal chiropractor. Um, I've also heard about animal acupuncture, but of course I kind of live out, I live in a small, small town. So like, if you even ask around about something like that, you're going to get a weird look right I should be used to that by now but <laughs> if you live in an area where you have access to that my god go get it you know because um, I'm I'm hurting I even try to ask my chiropractor um, if he would be willing because I know he owns horses and he's like ah. and I asked you know vet out here and I got a weird look and all of that so I'm just with my hands I've been massaging him out um, but again, it's not enough, it's not enough, right? So um, during COVID and the lockdowns and all of that, um, as he was worsening, it was actually earlier this spring, we were still dealing with lockdowns and crazy mandates and all of that. So I contacted a holistic vet online who was willing to do virtual meetings, okay? and. She was incredibly, incredibly resourceful. My God, highly recommend. Like just a wealth of knowledge, okay? And she sent me all kinds of links and recommendations and yada, yada. The problem is that it was all online. And apart from the diagnostics, which obviously need to be done in, t in office, you know, we really couldn't quite lock it down and she did say okay this is the next step you've got to go to one of these conventional vets get them to run a blood test get them to do an x-ray so we can you know figure out what's going on rule things out as far as muscular skeletal issues 
dietary disease, whatever, with the blood work and the x-rays. So I had a few setbacks, um, and several months later, uh, probably I guess about two to three months later, I finally got him into the vet, um, and $400 later, got the blood work and the x-rays, which let me know he does not have muscular skeletal issues. He, his blood work and x-rays are completely healthy. So what does that tell us? That leaves us with, he's got neurological damage. And the vet did tell me that pretty immediately after seeing him in person and you know, the rate at which, and I will say in all fairness, the original vet that I saw that thought, oh, he's got muscular skeletal issues. He was not that advanced in his immobility. Okay. Um, but yeah, a couple weeks ago when I took him in, the vet saw the level of immobility and said he's paralyzed. Um, this is neurological damage and the tests confirmed it. So, um, like I said, their prognosis, you know, the standard advice in the situation with a conventional doctor, from what I can tell, is, sorry, ma'am, there's nothing we can do, and they just send you home with some pain meds, and I guess let you decide when you can't take it anymore and you're going to put the dog down, because um, it is pretty bad to the point where, at this time, I'm having to feed my dog. I'm having to give him water through a turkey baster and you can see the frustration in his eyes. He wants to get up and go. The mind is willing, but the body is not. The body is not able and you, you see the frustration in him and he's like urinating on himself now and um, we're having to clean him up a lot. Um, and he's frustrated. I know he, he does try to stand and just a little bit to pee standing rather than lay down, pee on himself. He's trying to do it, but we're just kind of like, oh, you know. And my kids are talking to me about putting him down and I think what's hard with this situation is that I see in his eyes that the life is still there and you'll see in the videos that everything is working properly except this issue everything right the lights on somebody's home but the body's just like we quit and he is 13 year old Great Pyrenees and from what I hear that breed usually has an expiration date about 10 years so he's already made it past his expiration date and I do want to say this you know like my kids and I think some people are like ah, oh, you know you're getting into wishful thinking here I am not thinking that what I'm doing is going to buy my dog immortality I am hoping that in some way I can alleviate um, the frustration and the, the difficulties that he's having because I think of all ways to go out, this has got to be, I don't know that there's any nice way to go out, okay, but this is really unpleasant, very unpleasant, and even I th think to myself if I put him down, he's probably going to be fully cognizant of everything going on and he's going to be kind of looking at me like what what's going on here what are you doing because he's just laying there he's just laying there but he he knows everything's working up here in the brain and i just feel like he's it's like you're putting down a perfectly good dog it's just the body is not so um I'm going to at some point do a follow-up video with Ian, you know, if I can't reverse the damage, if I can't make him more comfortable, I'm going to have to make that hard decision probably at the end of this month. Um, I am not necessarily expecting a miracle. Of course, I appreciate any prayers um, that 
you guys want to send my way or positive attentions, whatever you put your belief in, uh, belief is powerful. So, um, I appreciate that. And if all else fails, I am putting this video out there because this is a video I needed a year ago when I did not know what was going on. And I couldn't figure it out. But I've learned a lot since then. And um, I don't want this knowledge and experience to go to waste. And if, you know, it helps somebody out there to slow down this process um, or make it not as damaging um, then it will it will be good I think I will have helped somebody and some good will have come from this experience all right let me show you now um, what I do for my dog I hope you enjoy Okay, I'm gonna show you how I make this meal for my dog. Um, these are the ingredients. I was watching videos late one night on healthy foods that help heal neurological damage. And I saw like pretty much all these items here on the list and I thought, wow, I've got this in my pantry right now. So I just whipped something together really quick, but um, turmeric, ginger, these can help with inflammation and real salt add some minerals in uh, coconut oil uh, make sure you're getting organic unrefined virgin cold press you know all those little you know lovely things <laughs> um, and i'm going to melt mine down um, pink salmon wild alaskan is what i'm looking for on the label and then we want some garlic fresh minced and or as fresh as possible right nutritional yeast chia seeds flax meal and make sure it's ground already if you don't have ground flax seeds and you just have whole flax seeds then you need to put them in the blender otherwise without grinding it up it's difficult for the body to digest and get the full nutritional benefits. So look for whole ground or grind your own at home. These are gonna provide healthy fats. And today I'm a little bit low on my coconut oil. So I'm gonna substitute some avocado oil. And again, we're looking for something that's like, you know, uh, cold pressed, 100% pure, organic, non-GMO, all the good things. And that's what I'm gonna use. Um, these are healthy fats, but I do believe if you you know, can get the coconut oil, definitely get it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is start with this container. If there's any, you know, leftover, I can just, you know, pop the lid on, store it for later. Next thing I'm gonna do is take the canned salmon undrained. Oof, I need to be more careful, right, than I was. <laughs> And what you're gonna do is put it in here and start gently pulling it apart. And this is the tricky part. We're trying to get the bones out, right? Very important. And the way we go about doing that is gently pulling apart to see where are the bones. Like I can see right there, there are bones, right? And I'm just gonna use the can to put any bones away. And I know some of y'all are maybe grossed out about this because, you know, there's skin on there. But think about that. That is really good. Um, it's really healthy for them to eat the whole fish. Sometimes these come out a little bit more clean. You know, separating the bone can be done a little bit more clean than what I'm showing you here. Yeah, like if you get a whole patch there then it comes out a lot easier but sometimes it breaks off in little little bone fragments and that gets messier all right and i'm just crumbling it out to make sure i'm not overlooking anything now because my dog is you know a larger breed i'm not terribly concerned about him chewing these bones but 
Um, that might be an issue more for smaller breeds. Nevertheless, I just, you know, I do get the bones out so it doesn't cause him any problems. Okay, I think that we've gotten all the bones. Yeah. Now that I've washed my hands, I'm going to get this trash out of the way. And then I'm going to pour the coconut oil in there. And I measured out about two tablespoons and melted it on the stove. Now, yeah, some of you might want to pop it in the microwave, but just a reminder, when you microwave your food, you're radiating it. And some say that causes it to lose nutrients, so I avoid the microwave as much as possible. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is put a teaspoon or basically a clove of minced garlic. Then I'm going to put about a teaspoon of turmeric, half teaspoon of ginger, one tablespoon of chia seeds, one tablespoon of ground flax seed, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, and we're going to get a pinch of real salt that has good minerals in there. And then I'm going to mix it up. And now I'm going to put the lid on. And I think it'll store in the refrigerator for probably two to three days. You ready to eat? Oh yeah, you love that, don't you? And I made it just for you. I made it just for you. I know, like, hurry it up. Get it in my mouth. Okay, now I'm going to show you what I do for his physical therapy, and we want to make sure that he's straight and on his back as much as possible, and then I'll usually start with his bicycle technique, but if I can't get him to, um, if he's too stiff to do the bicycle technique, then I'm going to stretch him in other ways to try to get his muscles to loosen up. And yeah, sometimes um, he want, needs a break, you know, look at him. He looks so happy actually, but um, we're just kind of massaging him and, you know, letting him know everything's okay. He, you know, he sometimes chokes on his tongue when he's on his back. That's, you know, great Pyrenees problem, but <laughs> let him gather himself and then try again um, to stretch him out in uh, different positions. And I learned all these positions from another video. I'm going to show you just a little snippet of it, and I'll have the link for it down below. Um, and they do a much better job of showing you all the different, see in the top left corner, they're doing the bicycling, and oh, they're doing all kinds of things just to, you know, stretch and get those muscles going. And from what I understand, the point of all of this is to get the um, nerves to reconnect again to the brain. 
to help, you know, connect the, the communications again with the brain, you know, because apparently that's, that's part of the neurological damage. There's a breakdown in the communication between the nerves and the brain. And so then after we finish doing all those exercises, then I just kind of rub him out. And that helps with the circulation. I might still, you know, stretch him a bit um, as need be to kind of loosen him up. Um, and, nor and this is, by the way, something you can do just yourself. The, the other, you know, techniques I was showing you involve another person. And that's a challenge here. You kind of need another person with those other exercises. Another issue is that a lot of these videos don't say um, how many reps to do, how often each day. And for me, I'm doing about, I started out at about 10 and moved up to 20 and then moved up about 40 a day on each of the different exercises. It's kind of, in my opinion, an intuitive thing. Each dog is going to be different in how much they need and how they're progressing. So you kind of just got to feel out what the dog can handle and maybe try to push them a little bit further each day. Okay, I'm super excited. I just got this product in Myelin Sheath. Um, these pills and the Nerve Tonic. I just got that in the mail and um we'll see how it goes mr man just had his first he likes it too he just had his first um dosage of it and you know he, since he's a larger breed i have to give him uh you know more i had to give him two pills now and then two pills again later and i put them in these pill pockets which is where i'm putting all his supplements like i'm supplementing right now with um d2 k3 a uh, one milliliter is uh according to siri roughly 20 drops and at first i just kind of put them um in one of these I put the drops in one of these and I could only get like 10 drops in there. So he got two of those full of this. But then I kind of tasted it to see how bad it was. <laughs> it doesn't taste bad at all. So I don't think it would be horrible for you to just drop it in the mouth directly. Um, and it does say you could squirt it into the mouth or add to a small amount of food. Okay, might do that. Might do that. Yeah, I'm excited to see how this works out. Day one. He's getting his fight back. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you about some pain relief that I've used for my dog. The first vet that I found um, is a conventional vet and... You know, I did express to her that I was looking for a holistic vet. And so she tried to work with me on that, although she didn't really have a background in it. So she recommended this product that she'd heard about. It is homeopathic. Um, I gave it a try. Honestly, I'm going to tell you, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, number one, it's expensive. It's about 20 bucks for... Um, two ounces <laughs> yeah that's two ounces there that I'm holding in that picture uh, about 20 bucks and then you got to pay shipping and handling and you got to buy it online uh, you can't just go get it down at the store well I think I've heard that Walmart carries it or they'll sell it on their website but you can also buy it directly from the company's website you know, it's just not easily available and accessible. It's pricey. Then you got to wait on the shipping after you pay for the shipping. And then here's the kicker. Here's the kicker is that I got this product and the two times I used it, my dog had anxiety. He was pacing. Uh, this is back when he was a lot more mobile um, I don't know that he could pace now, but um, I was like really concerned about his behavior and I was feeling his heartbeat and it was racing. And the main ingredient in this product is um, snake venom. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, snake venom. Okay, so, I mean, I, I'm not a doctor. I don't claim to understand everything, but, you know, it was recommended by a vet. It's homeopathic. It's natural. I thought, well, let me give it a try. But, yeah, after two tries of that and that was the outcome, I was like, yeah, I don't feel good about this. And so vet number two that I got, which was the online holistic vet, I talked to her about it. She said she'd never heard of the product you know, I even went online, by the way, to see reviews, and there's hardly any reviews at all. So here it is. <laughs> I'm giving it to you. Um, I went into this blind, I will just say, but I was desperate for solutions. Okay. Yeah, the vet number two is holistic, said she had never heard of it. And based on, you know, his experience with it, she agreed that I should not put him back on it again. So I'm sitting here with practically a full bottle of $20, you know, pain relief that I'm probably never going to use again. Um, now, I found something even better, which I'm very happy to report that um, I found it by chance from somebody who recommended that I use this to deal with my own pain, my headaches, my back pain. And I started using it and then I, it's a light bulb went off in my head like, wait, can I use this for my dog? <laughs> and I started looking at um, the joint supplements that I had been giving them and they actually contain MSM powder. So, you know, come to find out, yes, you can um, supplement with straight MSM powder, which I get mine. Um, from natural grocers and I find it in their you know supplement aisle it looks like it's going to be found in the bulk food section but it's not you can find it on the supplements aisle and you get eight ounces um, for like uh, four ninety nine, five five bucks okay and you can use it as a human the dog can use it you can sprinkle it in their food um, it has no side effects. Um, there's a, like a lot of um, study you can look at online. Uh, there's been a lot of research on using MSM for dogs. Um, and so uh, the benefits of the MSM are not just natural pain relief, but it's also, you know, an antioxidant. It's a joint healer. And... Um, it helps with the connective tissues and uh, has been often used with dogs that have arthritis, hip dysplasia, joint problems. Uh, it helps with their skin and their hair. It can relieve some allergy symptoms as well. And it also has anti-parasitic action. Um, really positive stuff. And so I've just been using that. I put it in his dog food and... Um, you know, for my dog, like I have it written on the label so I don't forget that he needs like two teaspoons a day. Now this is based on weighing 95 pounds. He's lost weight as always. Check with your vet, make sure you got your, you know, your weight right because right, my dog was ordinarily 95, but in the last weigh-in he's like 54. So, um, you know, that's really about a, ha that's a teaspoon a day now based on his current weight at full weight, two teaspoons. Um, and um, this would be like 10,000 milligrams total would is equivalent to two teaspoons, 5,000 milligrams per teaspoon. All right, so um, do the math, do the research, look it up online. And I have just been a lot more um, pleased with this product. It's easily available. Uh, you can just go down to the store and get it. It is very affordable. You can use it for yourself. There are no side effects. Um, I will recommend the, this all day long, you know, every day. <laughs> no complaints. Although I will tell you a somewhat funny story. Uh, before I started using this, I did ask vet number three, who is a conventional vet, if I could use the MSM powder for pain relief. And he said, no, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> and wrote me a prescription for some um, questionable pain meds that have questionable long-term side effects. And... Uh, were arguably very expensive. Um, 
which by the way, I have not used. I, I did get the medication, but I'm only have it here for emergencies if all else fails, but so far I haven't had a need to use it, but I thought it was interesting that a conventional vet told me that MSM powder would not work on the dog and it did. And I'm not gonna call him stupid, but I do think he's smart. He's just not smart in alternative medicine. And you gotta keep that in mind um, when you're dealing uh, with vets, do they have a holistic background or not? Um, they're they're only smart in what they're trained to be smart in, right? So mm, weigh it out. Like I said before, not all vets are created equal, and each um, kind of perspective has its own pros and cons. Okay, that's all I've got for now until I post the next update, and um, hopefully I have better news and hopefully there's something that I've shared with you in this video that helps you and yours. Be blessed.